Believe it or not, Max Brown was the number one quarterback prospect in the class of 2013, and he was expected to eventually be an NFL starter. But things didn't exactly go to plan for him. On this channel, I think I've done a good job of telling a player's stories based off the stats. But I want to tell the stories with more meaning, and hopefully help us all learn and apply things to make our lives better. I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, because despite him being a 5-star recruit and a college bust, Max has had the right attitude and has seemingly found happiness and a purpose outside of football. His story can teach us all lessons, and I'm super excited to tell it. Today we are going to be talking about the rise of Max as a player, his college experience, and how he has found happiness without playing the game of football. But first, if you are new to the channel, I make videos about college football, so you will regret not subscribing to the channel. If you enjoy my content, be sure to smash that like button, drop a comment, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with what happened to Max Brown. When you grow up a football prodigy, it means a few things. First, you aren't going to be able to live a normal life. Second, all you do is play football. And finally, you usually have high expectations to live up to, and if you don't, then people view you as a bust or a failure. Max Brown was a quarterback prodigy while he grew up in the suburbs of Seattle. He eventually got to Skyline High School, and people knew that he was going to be big time. Max had all the measurables in the world to become an elite quarterback, and that is exactly what he did in high school. He became a prep star, and by the time he was a senior, he had led his team to a 14-0 record, and they destroyed every team in the process. When scouts sat down to rank the number one quarterback in the class of 2013, it was going to come down to Max Brown, Christian Hackenberg, and Shane Morris. They ended up saying it wasn't that close, and Max was given the title of being number one. Whether that was a good thing or not was yet to be determined though. Besides dominating his senior year, he also led his team to a state title, and Brown became the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Washington, and he was also invited to the Army All-American game. After leading his team to two state titles and throwing for 4,526 yards in his Skyline career, he was wanted by every major school in the country. He had offers to play for schools such as Alabama, Auburn, Clemson, Oklahoma, USC, and Wisconsin, but it was really going to come down to the Sooners and the West Coast power of USC. After visiting the campus and spending some time with former All-American Matt Barkley, Max left the Southern California campus knowing he was going to play college football there. He ended up committing to the Trojans over the Sooners, and he had this to say about USC. USC came into the picture several months ago, and ever since then, they really went after me hard. As a quarterback growing up in the West Coast, at least for me personally, there's always the dream of growing up and being the quarterback for the Trojans. The dream ended up coming true, and he enrolled early to compete for the starting job. At the time, Lane Kiffin was the head man at USC, but Max was never going to have consistency at the coaching helm. He came into the program with a lot of hype, and was pegged to be Matt Barkley's replacement. As an 18-year-old kid going into college, that has to weigh on your mind, and it must be tough to think about those expectations all the time. Despite all that, Brown came in with excellent intangibles, he was a super accurate quarterback, he had a great football IQ, and he was born to be a leader. So many thought that the sky was the limit for him. He was immediately thrusted into a quarterback battle with Cody Kessler and Max Wittick, and the coaching staff felt it would be best to redshirt Brown as a freshman. Cody ran away with the starting job, but things weren't all sunshine and rainbows for the team. After a 3-2 start, Lane Kiffin was fired, and Ed Orgeron became the interim head coach. The change ended up doing wonders for the team, as they finished 7-2, and, and at one point they were even ranked. Despite Orgeron's obvious success, they decided to move on from him, and Clay Helton became the other interim head coach for the team. Even though he won the Las Vegas Bowl, they decided to hire Steve Sarkeesian to be the next head coach. In just one year, Max Brown had to play for four different head coaches, and his redshirt year was practically useless because he was going to have to learn a whole new system and playbook. Despite not playing as a freshman, the USC fanbase was hopeful for Brown, and he had a hopeful attitude for the future. Steve Sarkeesian came from Washington, and he brought most of his staff to USC, including then defensive coordinator and current California head coach Justin Wilcox. Kessel remained the starting quarterback, but this time Max was going to be the backup quarterback. The Trojans had a ton of weapons, which included Nelson Aguilar, Juju Smith-Schuster, and running back Javorius Buck Allen. Despite not winning the starting job, Max remained positive and watched as his team went 8-4 with wins over number 13 Stanford, number 10 Arizona, and Notre Dame. They ended up going to the Holiday Bowl, and they beat number 25 Nebraska while there. On the year, he appeared in three games and completed three passes for a grand total of 30 yards. Kessler was now a senior, and Max knew he only had to wait one more year before he could become the starter. The Trojans began the season ranked number 8 in the country, but they fell to a disappointing 3-3 start. 
They did win five of their last six regular season games though, and they advanced to the Pac-12 championship. While there, they would rematch against Stanford. Things would change again though, as Steve Sarkeesian left the program due to health concerns, and Clay Helton became the permanent head coach. They lost to Stanford in the championship game, and then lost to Wisconsin in the Holiday Bowl. As a sophomore, Brown completed eight passes for 113 yards. But Kessler was now gone, and after a long wait, it was finally time to unleash Max Brown. Or so we thought. As a junior, Max beat out Sam Darnold for the starting job, and the USC fanbase was super excited. He had waited seemingly forever, and he was now finally going to get his moment. The Trojans began the season on the national stage against number one Alabama in the Texas kickoff. The Tides quarterback was five-star freshman Blake Barnett, and it was going to be a battle of high-profile quarterbacks. I find it funny, because Blake Barnett is the same type of quarterback as Brown, and he ended up flopping in college as well. Unfortunately, USC's office wasn't very good, and Alabama won the game pretty easily. Max threw his first career touchdown the following week against Utah State, but that would go on to be the best game of his USC career. After another disappointing game against Stanford, Max was benched in favor of the redshirt freshman Sam Darnold. From there, Darnold took over the offense and helped lead the Trojans to 8 straight wins, and he then beat Penn State in the Rose Bowl, which was honestly one of the best games of the decade. This was a really tough break for Max, but he remained positive. He knew it was nothing personal against him, but Darnold just fit the offense better than he did. He was still really good friends with Sam, and at the end of the day, Max just wanted to see the team do well. He had now gotten his degree, and was also working on his master's degree, so he definitely had gotten his education. After the year, Sam Darnold was so unbelievably hyped up and was the potential number one overall pick, so Max packed his bags and went over to Pittsburgh. Just like all of his career before this, literally a few days after he committed to the Panthers, their offensive coordinator left and head coach Pat Narduzzi had to convince Max to stay. He ended up buying into what he said, and he was expected to be the starting quarterback. He won the job and started their week one matchup against Youngstown State. It took overtime for them to beat the FCS Power Penguins, but Max only threw for one touchdown. He struggled in their next game against rival Penn State, and he was eventually benched. It was nothing against Brown once again, but he just wasn't helping the offense this time. A few weeks later, he changed his attitude, practiced hard, and rebounded, which led him to get the start against Rice. He threw for four touchdowns against the Owls, and maybe he was finally going to play up to his potential. Sadly though, he was thrown another curveball as he broke his shoulder in the third quarter against Syracuse, and his college career was now over. He did have two workouts for NFL teams, but Max Brown never lived up to the hype he had coming out of high school, and he could have let that define his life, but he didn't. He doesn't regret anything that happened to him, and he wishes that he would have been more easygoing. In an interview, he said if he would have told his 18-year-old self what happened to him, he would have taken it as a life disaster, but he says he is thankful for his family, his amazing friends, all the connections he's made, the times he did get to play, and the amazing education he walked away with. This is something that we can all learn from, as no matter what happens to us in life, there's always something to be thankful for, I know we can all apply this attitude to our lives. He hasn't done anything football related in a while, but he seemingly found happiness in a world without football. He began commentating and analyzing Pac-12 football games on YouTube in hopes of one day becoming a color commentator, but for now, he seems to be fine with being on the radio. Based off his social media profile, he seems to be very open about his life, his struggles, and his USC career, and he doesn't portray a fake image. He is who he is, and he is proud of how his life has turned out, and that is something we should all do. So many athletes only post stuff because they think it's cool, and they hide their real personalities and feelings to the world. Max Brown is a breath of fresh air, and instead of letting his football career define his life and let people bring him down, he has put a positive spin on it and found happiness in himself. Overall, I really don't remember much of Max Brown in college, but looking back at his story, it makes me wish that he had more success. He came into USC with high expectations from himself and the fan base, but the college football gods just didn't have it in the cards for him to be a star. It is sad to see that he had to end his career with a devastating injury, but I'm happy that he at least got to try out with some NFL teams and at least got the opportunity to potentially make it to the NFL. Max may not have done well in college, but he's definitely not a bust in life. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I really want to know what you guys think, so please let me know down in the comment section below. I want to make videos and tell stories that inspire and teach us how to live our lives better, so if you have a player or story I should do on this channel, feel free to let me know in the comment section below and I will heavily consider doing it. If you enjoy videos like this or just love college football in general, then this is definitely the channel for you and you will regret it if you do not subscribe. Be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed today's video or if it inspired you in any way, shape, or form. While you're still here, check out these other cool videos I have selected for you to watch next and until next time, peace.